Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Palm Sunday service of worship here at Lupo. Uh, wonderful to see all of you here as we observe and remember the day when Jesus came into Jerusalem. And so this is going to be Holy Week coming up. And uh, to, to remember that, we will have a communion service here in the sanctuary at six o'clock on Thursday evening. Uh, so we invite you all to come to our Holy Thursday service. We do have a birthday coming up this week. Beth is going to have her birthday on the 31st. And so happy birthday and thank you for uh, all you do for us and for uh, being a part of the life of our congregation. Do you want to do a quick happy birthday? <laughs> So let's uh, take a few minutes and prepare ourselves for worship. And our first hymn is going to be number 280, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Our Psalter reading today is from Psalm 118. You are welcome to follow along if you would like in your hymnal on page 839. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There are joyous songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. 
The Lord has chastened me sorely, but has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God who has given us light. Let the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good. For God's steadfast love endures forever. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Oh God, on this Palm Sunday, we remember that you are the King of Kings who came riding into Jerusalem on the Mount of Royalty on a donkey and listened to shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We come to give you the same shouts of praise and thanksgiving today, O oh Lord. We praise you for sending your Son into Jerusalem and for sending your son to earth to die for our sins and to be raised from the dead. We pray that those praises of Hosanna would continue on our mouths and in our hearts and not turn to cries of crucify him, crucify him as they did so long ago. We remember the words of the psalmist who reminded us that the Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. We thank you, O oh God, for being our strength and our power and our salvation. 
We thank you for being a part of our lives each day. We thank you that you have saved us through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to continue your presence with us for the last 2,000 years. We thank you for the great gift of your church and for billions of Christians worldwide who call on the name of the Lord. We ask, O oh God, that you would keep us faithful to your promise, faithful to our promise to you, and faithful to our call. We pray that we would continue to have you reign at the center of our lives, on our hearts, and in our spirits. We pray, O oh God, that we would have trust in you, trust for strength in times of weakness, and for hope in times of discouragement, and for joy in times of depression. Thank you, O oh God, for that great gift of your Son that we celebrate on this day. We ask your blessing for those people who are sick and those who are suffering from COVID today. We pray that you would heal them, strengthen them, encourage them, and bring them back to our presence safely soon. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, Cam wants to come forward now for the children's sermon. You ready, buddy? Good to see you today. How are you today? Doing good? Yeah? Do you know what today is? Today is Palm Sunday. So when um, Jesus was going to Jerusalem, when he was coming in, all the people were so excited to see him. So they took palm fronds, like the leaves from the palm, and they were waving it at him and throwing them at his feet. That was a sign that the Messiah was coming. They were so happy, right? So, you know what they shouted at him? They said, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Can you shout Hosanna for us? No, maybe not. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get, the, we'll get the church to help us in a second, right? Now, in this story in the Bible, there is another symbol. Can you guess what it is? It's an animal. It's a rooster. Now, what would a rooster have to do with the coming of the Messiah? Do you know? Let's see. So, in this story, the rooster symbolized betrayal. See, the disciples and people said that they were going to stick by Jesus, but guess what? When times got hard, some people chickened out like a rooster. Now, do you know what a rooster says? Cock-a-doodle-doo. Cock-a-doodle-doo! <laughs> yeah, that's what the rooster says. So, on this Sunday, we need to remember that we praise Jesus and we love him so much, right? So, we have the palms, but we're all flawed. Some We all make mistakes, right? And sometimes when, when things get hard for us, we kind of turn our back to Jesus sometimes because we're, you know, people are flawed, right? We just did that, right? So we need to remember the palms that we love Jesus so much and the rooster that sometimes we mess up. But you know what? Jesus forgives us, doesn't he? God forgives us. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness, right? And turn and go back to doing what he wants us to do, right? Now, I think you want to have some fun. Come over here. Let's go over here. All right, we want this side of the church.
Set. Raise your arms for me. Say, Hosanna in the highest. Come on, church. Hosanna in the highest. Okay. Now this side, we can come over here. All right. Now this side of the church is going to remind us of the rooster, right? The chicken. All right. Get you, look at your daddy. Make your daddy say cock-a-doodle-doo. Say, do it, daddy. Say, cock-a-doodle-doo. All right, that's all I have for today. Do you want to pray real quick? Yeah, let's pray. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this handsome boy in our church this morning. And we thank you that we know that we praise you in the highest, but sometimes we mess up and we turn our back on you. Please help us to... Forgive us and help us to see our sins and to repent. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our New Testament lesson today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being bound, found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The next hymn is number 278, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. <laughs> pray. We ask, O oh Lord, that through the reading of your word this morning, we may hear with joy and thanksgiving what you say to us through this story of your son's passion and death. In his name we pray. Amen. So today I'm going to again uh, observe, I guess you could say, uh, a Palm Sunday tradition that I have, have done each year, and that is instead of a short scripture reading followed by a sermon, we're going to just have an extended gospel reading, chapters 14 and 15 from the Gospel of Mark, which tell us the story of Jesus' final hours and his crucifixion. Listen now, beginning in Mark chapter 14, verse 1. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. 
The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival or there will be a riot among the people. When he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But there were some there who said to one another in anger, why was the anointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased, and they promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this day, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. 
remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple preaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him saying to him, prophesy. The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began to say to the bystanders, 
This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then, after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among him, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, also were mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, 
Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he heard from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please follow along with our last hymn, number 298, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
please leave your offerings uh, in the plate that is in the narthex, and I will look forward to greeting you on the way out. Thank you.